Zoro is already quite powerful right now. In fact, it is safe to assume that Zoro has acquired all the skills that he could possibly need to defeat Mihawk, but he still cannot beat Mihawk. And while that might be confusing to some fans, the answer to why that is the case is quite simple. Zoro cannot defeat Mihawk right now because even though he has the tools to defeat him, he hasn't improved his grasp over these tools as much as he needs to. Essentially, Zoro has a problem with efficiency more than anything. Zoro possesses a tremendous amount of physical strength, and at the same time, his techniques with his blades are also top-notch. Zoro possesses all three types of hockey, as fans know already. After the time skip, Zoro showcased the usage of observation hockey quite early in the Fishman Island arc. He showcased armament hockey in Dressrosa, and the Wano arc was absolutely magnificent for Zoro, given that he tapped into the power of his conqueror's hockey unknowingly in the battle against Kaido. When he fought against King, this power truly awakened, and it allowed Zoro to finally best the right-hand man of Kaido. All this was thanks to Zoro's mystical sword, Emma, which allowed him to harness the hockey that was latent deep inside of him. Curiously enough, even though he already defeated King, his weakness was highlighted very well in this fight. It was clear that Zoro could not manifest the King of Hellform, which is essentially him tapping into his conqueror's hockey at full power for long. Zoro clearly mentioned that he would essentially die if he were to ever utilize conqueror's hockey at its maximum potential for long. This is precisely why Zoro only lasts in battle while using conqueror's hockey for a handful of minutes. Right now, this is Zoro's biggest weakness, and if he does overcome this, then it is safe to say that Zoro will gain even bigger strength, and that is where his focus should be at this point in time. So how Zoro will learn to master Conqueror's hockey? The Elbuff arc is going to be absolutely massive for Zoro. This shouldn't be a surprise to any fan, given that Elbuff is a major arc. Fans recently saw the Straw Hat Pirates fight in Egghead, but they knew that the Egghead Island arc was more of a transitional arc than anything. All the monster trio had important moments in Egghead, but Zoro Zoro was certainly the most underwhelming of all three. Even though he did fight against Luchi, fans did not get to see him do anything significant other than give Luchi a devious wound on his chest. Even in this fight, Zoro was seen utilizing his conqueror's hockey through the King of Hell form, but he did so in spurts. In various instances, Zoro did not tap into the power of conqueror's hockey. However, when the moment to strike came, Zoro tapped into the full power of his blade and unleashed conqueror's hockey. When Zoro struck down Luchi with his ultimate move, he clearly utilized conqueror's hockey and dealt deadly damage to the CP0 agent. But this isn't sustainable in a proper fight and Zoro knows that as well. That is precisely where Elbaf comes in, and we know that Zoro will have to strengthen himself even further here. Zoro can strengthen his hockey itself in the Elbaf R through training. For one, Elbaf is the Warland, which essentially means that there are likely plenty of powerful giants here. At the same time, there are also quite a lot of powerful beasts on the land of Elbaf. Zoro was recently seen fighting against some of them, and if he does continue to do that, he's sure to strengthen himself even further. But the real challenge is going to come through the giants, which fans have not seen yet. At some point, Zoro will most likely confront some of these giants, who will help him bring out the next level of his power. While the giants might be underestimated by some fans, they should remember that the giants are the strongest in the world, and their strength is such that they could even have made Big Mom the king of the pirates, which is absolutely essential for readers to keep in mind. If Zoro goes into combat with them, then he can finally figure out how to stabilize his hockey properly while not reducing the cutting edge that it offers him. Furthermore, if the Straw Hat Pirates cross paths with the Red Hair Pirates, then Zoro will most likely fight against Ben Beckman, Shanks' very own right-hand man. In this battle, Beckman will also showcase his conqueror's hockey, given that Shanks' crew is hockey-based. In fact, Beckman will only utilize hockey in this battle, which essentially implies that there will be extra care shown to this particular power in the battle. Perhaps it is Ben Beckman who will help Zoro stabilize his hockey all the while ensuring that he doesn't reduce his output and doesn't lose his life and stamina while utilizing Inma. After this fight, Zoro will most likely have learned how to utilize Supreme King Hockey to the best of its abilities and become even stronger. It is clear for the fans to see that Zoro is quite powerful right now, but he's clearly not anywhere near the top tiers of the One Piece world. Zoro still needs to train relentlessly if he intends to defeat the strongest characters such as Mihawk, and right now, he isn't even as strong as an admiral. But after the Elba arc, Zoro likes learn how to utilize his hockey properly without dying and improve the efficiency overall in battle. He will surely be on the same level as the Admirals of the Marines. Once Zoro attains that level, he should be ready to fight Mihawk, which could come anywhere around the end of the Elbaf or shortly after it. Well, the video ends here, but I'd like to know your opinion, so make sure to let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, do give it a like, and also subscribe to the channel. We'll meet again with another amazing video. Until then, goodbye.